He's the young fella dressed like a clown. George and I had to be married. He's from California. Yeah. So where are those horses from? I don't matter where they're from. Let's see. You help Ian Blam and escort him across the Murray tomorrow. George says there's more where they come from, too. A great big mob of them on James Whitty's property. Them horses are stolen. Come to farm, not steal. And your boy husband shouldn't be talking down into Duffin neither. George King has taught your brother to be a man. Like Harry Powell was to teach me. You know nothing of my life. You ain't been here. There ain't a thing on this land for a woman but loneliness. Ned Kelly's been put on film a couple of times before. Mm. Um, what was it attracted to you about kind of giving your own version of the story? Well, just that the book was so different, you know, it was completely uh, sort of reimagined, invented version of the Nick Kelly story. So, you know, that, that was really exciting about kind of doing something that had been done many, many times before and really kind of uh, poking and prodding away at this sort of myth of who this man was and why he means something to Australia like he does. That, that was quite exciting to, uh, to think about doing. Um, when you read the book, could you immediately kind of see how you'd pull it off visually? Or do you just read it for pleasure and then think about that later? Uh, it wasn't until we were working on it for quite a while, trying to see if we could see it, feel a film there. Um, and uh, because it's all told through the first person, um, it becomes much trickier. Um, so it was how do you, the, the context of how do you put his writing, because it's, the whole film is a, is, is a letter to his daughter about kind of his real history and what actually happened. So once we got our head around the, 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 the point of view and what we felt the point of view was and what it was all leading to, and also that central relationship between the mother and son and her kind of influence over him, then, then it started to become an easier thing to kind of see as a, as a piece of cinema. I've admired Justin's work um, always and think he's an amazing director and the opportunity of working with him. And in this story, this kind of character as well, when, when Ned came along, it made a lot of sense to me in terms of things that I wanted to kind of pursue and explore for myself. Um, and, and so, yeah, it, it, Ned seemed like a wonderful vehicle to try and do that. Yeah, and I mean, it's not only is Justin Curzel an amazing director, but this character that I get to play is such a mercurial and uh, multi-layered woman. It's, you know, it's a very um, rare privilege to get to play such a, a an unusual, strong female character in a film like this. It's a very visceral film. Mm. Was that important to you, that tone? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's what I gravitate to quite a lot is sort of make putting audiences in pretty uncomfortable places and making them sort of feel as though they're living and breathing that point of view um, and sort of not letting them off. Um, that's that's something that I've always sort of gravita gravitated to in my f um, filmmaking. Yeah, was it a tricky shoot because obviously it's very remote locations and. Yeah, it was tough. It was, it was, we were sort of um, winter in Australia in the kind of highlands um, is always pretty kind of crazy. It reminded me a lot of doing sort of Macbeth in Scotland in Sky. It was quite, quite similar in terms of the sort of um, landscape. And it was strange too because we usually with Australian films you think kind of desert, blue sky, sun, and we were actually kind of shooting in, in the deep winter of Victoria, which is the complete opposite. So it, that, that came with all its challenges. I think we were always levelled with the kind of brutality of the world that they would have truly lived in. They would, you know, they didn't get to go home at the end of the day. Um, but there's a, yeah, that, that, that sort of brutality is, and, and the kind of toughness of the world is integral to the makeup of these characters and of the story and how they operate and why they operate in the way that they do. And it's, it's also, it's a different look at Australia in terms of, for, like Justin gave me this massive watching list of films, Australian Aussie cinema. And, and I got to go to lots of different places in the research for, for it. But I, I, there were certain places that we filmed which I would never associate immediately with a typical Australian environment. And that was, that was amazing. I think that's amazingly fresh. Yeah. And I, even though the world was quite brutal and the landscape was brutal and a lot of the physical aspects of it were brutal, I think there was, there was just this kind of level of everyone's deep involvement in it and feeling so privileged to be there and a part of it 
it was the making of it was in, was profoundly special. How long was the process that led you to George? I mean, was it a lengthy one? Uh, no, it was quite quick. He was brilliant as soon as he came in. He was he, he was running late because he the tube had broken down and he came in really hot and sweaty <laughs> and uh, he was just like he was like a racehorse he was just itching to go and and it was so well prepared and he so wanted it and there was a kind of quality about him there's something so beautiful and innocent and sophisticated about George and authored about him and the idea of taking that and completely fucking it was you know probably the thing that I got most excited about um, and there's a kind of evolution of George through it that you know definitely at the end is is really different from what we'd seen him do before um, which is kind of what I found exciting in him. Did you look at any of the previous portrayals of Ned Kelly? Because they're quite different from this. No, I haven't. <laughs> I, I, I actually, I was in Australia when I was a boy when uh, Heath Ledger's Ned Kelly came out and I saw it at the cinema. Did you? Yeah, yeah, I was doing Peter Pan. And it was my, uh, so I saw it at the cinema, but I didn't watch it, I didn't re-watch it just so not to kind of cloud my view of the character. So yeah, and I haven't seen Mick Jagger's yet. Fantastic supporting cast. How was putting that together? Uh, pretty amazing and pretty kind of quick and I'm still sort of pinching myself that I got all those uh, you know amazing actors to kind of play support roles in this so Russell was a much sort of longer process in that he was involved in the film for uh, a long long time whereas someone like Charlie and Nick came in quite late and you know I was just very lucky with timing and their interest in sort of playing these sort of smaller roles support roles um, them seeing sort of something in them um, to, to, to want to come out to Australia and, and, and be part of it. So, yeah, I'm pretty blessed. It's an amazing cast. How was it working with people like Russell Crowe and Charlie Hunnam? And... Oh, yeah, I, I didn't actually get to do any scenes with Russell because um, he's with the younger Ned, but working with, like, with, with Nicholas and, and I didn't actually get to work with Charlie. I got to be around those, those fellas, but it was, you know, Thomas and Mackenzie as well. It was, it was just brilliant, you know? It's just I think they were amazing. Yeah, I think the whole cast really brought it. Everyone was so um, profoundly good and so completely committed. Nicholas, Charlie, Russell. I, jo uh, it was um, it was uh, quite a big cast because there are so many really profoundly important people who influenced Ned's life. And um, I think they're all spectacular. They were beautiful, lovely, down-to-earth great cast and when you finish with this do you have your next project kind of locked and loaded or you still... I've been just directing in Mumbai Shantaram the TV series so I'm doing uh, I've just done the first two episodes for that and um, yeah hopefully we'll do some more real change of pace from yeah. There. yeah 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 it was some incredible actually over there working on it um, and Charlie Hunnam's in that as well so it's sort of really nice how you know th this kind of degree of separations kind of happened with you know, Charlie working on True History and then that sort of folding into Shantaram. Fire! We're the Kelly gang now. Yeah. Are we gonna take the future and make it ours? We're the sons of she! There is not a man born who could have the patience to suffer the injustice I have. So as you read this history, know that it will contain no single lie. May I burn in hell if I speak false.